I really spent a half a million on the house for granted. I'm really out here dancing. I'm really not romantic. I really got that petty. Hey, hey, I really know it's Eddie. Yo, what's up, man? Welcome back. It's first smoke of the day. It's your boy Pat Gods here. I'm here with my co-host Black Leaf. What up, man? What up? How the, you doing? Uh, this is a big one. Boy, we got somebody special in here today, man. Up north, stand Undisclosed. up. Deep, 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 deep in the east, man. Deep east, Steel Farms, bro. Welcome to the show, man. What's up? What's popping? Oakland, stand up, huh? Yeah. Bay Area. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> it's time to put us on the map. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't know, Deep East, DEO Farms, um, breeder of RS11, breeder of Zope. Ooh. The list goes on. But those, you know, <clears throat> most recent bangers, you're down here this weekend right now for the RS11 clone drop. Yes, we appreciate sir. you coming through the art gallery, man. For Sold real. out. Yeah. What sold you, out what you that shit was crazy what you guys are doing is is history in the making yeah. you know what i mean it's dope to see because you know it's by way of the streets yeah that you reminded know? me of like an old like hype beast sneaker release literally yeah people camping out in tents like it was crazy <laughs> yeah all, global yeah. all over the world came for that bro amsterdam belgium spain uk scotland other brands Oh, a lot Big, of other a lot brands. of other brands. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Michigan people, Ooh. a lot of New York people. We had like DC, Baltimore, a lot of Florida, Atlanta, and then we had a bunch of people from you know like Missouri, the states that you know they're still not legal. You know they're still doing it like love that underground. We had a bunch of them. Big shout out, you guys. Yeah, bro. And then I saw That's you guys we were even. Started. You guys were talking to people about how to even grow it in line. I saw like kind of helping them out. Like, oh, yo, I did, bro. I gave like all the people in line like my info. So if they have any questions <laughs> on how to grow, just tap in. Bro, yeah. that's Fire. sick. Fire. Yeah. And you guys were all there in person and stuff. Yeah. Touch ground, show like love, and make sure everybody gets gets handled yeah. correctly. You know what I mean? I mean, bro, that's the easiest thing for me to talk about. It's growing. I guess like my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> So that's easy combos for me. Let's let's get into it, man. So you're from Oakland, yeah, Oakland native. Um, what was it like growing up in Oakland? I know it's a tough city, man. Yeah, bro, it's just how do I put it into words? Like it's just like its own environment. Like it's there's probably a bunch of places in LA that's the same, you know, same environment. But like you know, you grow up in it and you think all that's regular until you go somewhere else and then realize like, hold on, this is, there's a lot of places outside of this. <laughs> yeah. And it's rough. I like mean, a lot of shit, like you get like normalized to, and it's not really normal. Even yeah. young, huh? Hell yeah. Like people having kids in high school, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it takes like, once you leave the city, you realize like, wait, hold on. I'm the only one that got kids and I'm a teenager. Like it's just so normal to you that, like it takes you leaving the city to realize that like the rest of the world is not like that. <laughs> Damn. Straight yeah. up. So, I mean, was high school then? Cause it sounds like you got into this, into the game and into this weed thing pretty early. Was that, was it middle school, high school? When did it start? Bro, I want to say like 15, like 15. I was like just selling, you know, a little bits of weed and stuff like before school, lunchtime, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What was, what so was I started like 15, 15 ish. Yeah. What was the first time smoking? Bro, my first weed that I strain yeah, that I smoked. First time yeah. ever smoking. Oh, bro, like it was a no name strain. It was just weed. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, what did like, you do? Did you smoke a joint or bomb? Bro, my first time smoking, bro, was out of a can because I was little. Like it was me too. <laughs> it was a That's fucking was. Coke can, bro. My you know first what? time smoking. Flatten it out, punch the holes in and the, the top. The second of the time can. was an apple. Cause the apples Hell like I could yeah. you graduate. hide it from my parents easier, you know, like you know, I throw a Coat like a Coke can pipe in the garbage. It looks hella hot. Like I'm like smoking crack or some. Like I can make a little apple pipe and then just eat the apple after, and it's damn yeah. early days. Like Super I started early. smoking. Like the first time I smoked was summer of seventh grade, I think. Yeah, summer seventh grade, and it was just no name. Some some, some Reggie. It was yeah, bro. Like I didn't have access to a lot. I was like a little kid. I didn't know any better. Like mm. yeah. And then did it just go from there? Yeah. Like you were smoking every day? I didn't start smoking every day till I was probably like like a sophomore. And then I really just started smoking every day. Yeah. 
<laughs> What'd you like to smoke? Like Bro, like like purple? blunt or what? Uh, we all yeah, we grew up on like swishes, like blunts. Yeah, yeah same with me. Yeah. It's home? funny the similarities because we're 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 from Florida, Coke can. Apple, you kind of graduate to the Apple and shit. Yeah, the apple like you said, was like I thought I had a great it. idea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where you put like a screwdriver in the side. Yeah, screwdriver, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? love it. I, I feel like it. A, when I we would get screwdriver, just <laughs> yeah. So if you got something better too, you want an Apple over yeah. the can because the can gets hot, gets crazy. And bro, those cans can't be good for you, bro. It's nah. aluminum. Hell no. That, that, back, that no. color comes off right where yeah. you smoke it. Yeah, hell no. Nah. Yeah. yeah, that's the part. And it just realize. looks bad. Like, oh, bro, I'm smoking out of a can. Like, yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that shit's rough. A lot of kids first time, though. You're, yeah. Because, <laughs> bro, I didn't know how to roll or anything either. Yeah. Yeah. Even like in Oakland, everyone still smokes woods. And then when I go to like high end events, everyone's on papers. So that's like a big cultural difference too. Like back home, every, it's just only woods. Even now. Yeah. I'm off woods though. I haven't smoked, don't really smoke woods like for a couple of years now. I'm just on like papers. You could feel your lungs better now or any difference? Uh, not really. It's just like why wood? Like I feel like you get a, more of a taste with the papers. Yeah. Especially when you're tasting a bunch of different phenols and want to select which one you like. Mm. I feel like it's important to get it in a paper. Cause you know, like the wood, like it, it kind of takes away from the the actual flavor of the, of the bud. Yeah. It's like, if you were drinking wine and you were going to sample some wine, you wouldn't pour it into a glass with Coca-Cola and then sample every glass. Right. Or you wouldn't pour it into a dirty cup that already had some, like it, no matter what, there's an altered flavor. That's, that's yeah. altering your flavor of the, the flower. And if that's the case, you're not getting what, what you as a breeder, you're like, I need to know if, if this is a 10 or yeah. But then I had a buddy say, well, if you smoke every single strain in the wood, then they're all compared anyway, and you'll know which one's best. Bro, wow. I think it's more like you get more of the pure taste in papers, like for sure. Agreed. Yeah. What type of papers do you like? Bro, I've been on like Vibe Papers. Shout out Burner. He gave me like a whole box of them. So I'm going to be running through those for like five years. I've been on a lot of vibes <laughs> papers. Up. Hell yeah. I like the hemp ones. Yeah, that's what's up then. Yeah. I've tried up. a few packs. I've yeah. tried a few packs. So I've been on them lately. But yeah, bro, I retired the woods. Had to. Like a couple years ago. Yeah. Had to. What up? Like if someone passes me a wood, like I'll still take a hit or something. I'm not like one of them. Like get that out of my face. Like I'll still hit a wood, but I'm not going to roll one up. Yeah, if you're rolling, you're rolling some papers. Yeah. That's good though, man. I feel like I could I could make a big difference in lungs. And yeah. So so is do you start seeing plants early on like that? Or is it just smoking with friends at first and years of that? Like, and you're getting bag seeds. Like what where does it start to be like where does it go? It, bro, I was just doing like selling weed and then like graduated to some like more like negative money making methods and like it was just not sustainable, bro. Like it's like you only make it a couple of years doing certain things. Like you can only get lucky so long. And like, you know, the penalties like versus the rewards weren't like, don't really balance out. Like if you could make, you know, $50,000 this way, bro, but you're facing like 10 years, like that math doesn't add up. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, cannabis was more like the safer route. Like I like it. Like I like plants. I've liked plants my whole life, bro. Like, since I was a little kid, I would just talk to gardeners about like fruit trees and all that. Like I always just love plants and animals like dogs and all that. So I'm like a plant animal person. So like, <laughs> like growing made sense for me. From early on. Yeah. Yeah. So then like most people I grew up with, right when they made some money, they'd spend it. And that was the difference with me is like, I was stack my money up. You had older brothers and sisters? Uh-uh. So who so older homie schooled you down and kind of helped you with that? Cause you got a mindset. You're saying I had couldn't be around that. I had to like had, yeah. that takes a lot of oversight and a lot as a young person to be like, I should get out of my situation. I should make a move. I should Yeah, like I came from kind of like a like a group that had structure to it. So like I was told by older people like how to conduct myself, like to, you know, to last longer. And like I was always taught, bro, like, like if you can't prove your income, don't spend any money. Like, don't, you know, don't flex. It's dangerous. It's going to put a, like a target on you. So like, I always just follow that advice and it was good advice. 
Straight up, yeah. yeah. It Everybody worked. Listening, man, for so real. So you got a mask on, big homie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not yeah. for real. But I always would listen when older people would talk to me. Like there was a lot of older people, bro, that would give you bad advice on purpose because they would want to use you as a tool or like use you as a weapon, and they would just give you bad advice on purpose just because like try to can brainwash you type shit. But then you know you'll find people that really actually like want to look out for you and got that good advice. So like I always listen to like the right older people because you know they've been in situations that I haven't been through yet, and like I rather really learn from someone else's mistake than learn for it on my own. So, yeah. Damn man. Still, bro. Like I'm still all ears, bro. If someone got game, like bro, I'm all ears. Like come on, let me hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So growing up, when's DPs coming around? When's when's you know the spark of breeding and growing and really like you know. Bro, I st- popping off. <laughs> I did my first breeding project on accident in like 2013. I made this strain called Dirty Cookies, which was like, bro, like to this day, I regret losing it. Like, bro, it hurts my heart even thinking about it. <laughs> but it was a white fire heroin and male crossed to a, a animal cookie. And bro, people back there still talk about it. And it's like, fuck, bro, I lost it. I lost that one in a in a raid. Cause you know, like how it was back then, like a lot of people would lose genetics and raids and it's just like, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So, but I got a bunch of, uh, pink guava. So pink guava is basically like the, the father of the RS line. So I got a bunch of, uh, pink guava, dirty cookies, and I'm about to pop them and like run through them deep. What was dirty cookies like? Bro, it was insane. Bro, people always used to compare it to this strain called Nade from the Bay Area. I never tried it, but like when people smoke the dirty cookies, that's they would always bring up a strain called Nade. Hmm. I think it was like a little bit before my time, but I like was, the name. Most people that smoked it compared it to to that strain, but like I said, I never got to try that one. Damn. Yeah. Shout out Dirty Cookies. Yeah. The first breeding project from Dia. And it was D-O. an accident, bro. Like an accident. Like Damn, I gave my cousin some clones. He like, my cousin set up like a little, what was it, a six lighter? And I gave him a bunch of clones. And by accident, I gave him one of my white fire heroin and males. So I pollinated his room on accident. <laughs> you know who you are. He was like, oh, bro. Bro, he was pissed. Yeah. And we didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah. And like the, the male plant was like right in the center of the whole room. So like we didn't catch it till like week three. But it was too late. That shit was seeded out. Room full of seeds. Yeah. So you you pulled thousands of seeds out of the bud, or what'd you do then? Bro, it was just it was seeded up weed. You're just like, this is what it is. I grabbed a bunch of the seeds and then like, bro, I just fucking flipped the packs with seeds. Yeah. I just grabbed like a, as many as I could and then just psh, gone. What's funny is probably a lot of people pop those. I'm sure a bro, decent only people knew what they had. Yeah. Those yeah, might somebody still got a couple of those floating around in a box somewhere. Oh, Guaranteed. Sure, sure. You still got some? The seeds? Did you see, save some? Bro, those seeds, nah. I Damn. popped like them there, all of them. But I have the dirty cookie pink guava. That's dope. So that's going to be be the comeback. Damn, Damn bring man. it back a look. I'm about to bring back the pink guava this year, too. Like the, yeah, like the precursor to the RS line. That'll be phenomenal. Yeah. It's coming back. So was there, was there an older homie, though, that like was like yo this is what a fucking growing plant looks like or like when like you're in high school and you're like who when's the first real plant you saw was it people just popping seeds like was it did you have a crew around you because it's usually someone that shows you like or were you just on your own it was me and my cousin like we're the same age so no one t- no one told us anything like damn we just okay. trial and error and basically did everything trial and error yeah we didn't have anyone putting up putting us on with anything damn Nothing. Bro, that's a hard journey. It's trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. And then I bought a house, bro, with like a three foot crawl space. Bro, it could not have been any ba- any deeper than this. And bro, me and my cousin dug out a whole basement by hand with shovels and pickaxes. Because we couldn't use jackhammer because of like, we weren't filing like lice. Like we weren't like. You dug out the whole getting basement. Getting permits for it. We dug out. First, we dug out a little, uh, a little front spot. Oh. And we put like four or six lights in there and did a like a run or two bro the first thing we got clones of hindu kush and purple kush 
from SR71. It was like a clone place in downtown Oakland. So like that was the first couple runs we did. And then we got a hold of this uh, Kush cut. It was just marked uh, Kush. And then some family members got it in like 1998. So I just called it like 98 Kush or vintage 98. And like that's back before up there, we really knew what OG was. It was just labeled Kush. And when you say a crawl space, though, you mean like non air conditioned space oh, underneath I mean like, the house. I mean like a three foot f- yeah. gap underneath the house. This is like, I need people to understand like this is yeah. making it work. Yeah. So like what we did too is like we didn't do it with, with permits. So during the week, we would pickaxe and shovel. And bro, once you got like one foot down in Oakland, it's all clay. So then you're all pickaxe. <laughs> Bro. So we would like pickaxe all week and then put all the dirt in the, towards the front. And then on the weekends, we'd take the dirt out when the city inspectors weren't driving around. Wow, dude. We want to talk about motivated stoners right there. <laughs> Bro, literally building a basement with a shovel and a pickaxe, like digging Bro, out down a there basement. All day long, all day, every day. How long did it take? Just for the first spot, like, like a month. And then after that, we dug out the entire basement and then we threw a 16 lighter in there. Hell and bro, yeah. We thought at our age, bro, we thought like we was like kingpins. Like we, we were killing it now. Like, oh, we got a whole 16 lighter. Like we're good for life. Yeah. Wow, bro. But we dug, it took us like months to dig out that 16 lighter. Months, maybe three months. And then we had to pour concrete like on our own on the weekends, like when there was no city inspectors driving around, bro, that like doing the rebar and pouring cement down in like a, it was rough. See, and you think you're getting into growing, right? You're like, oh, I'm going to get into growing. And then it's like manual labor. You're like electrical digging ditches. I mean, all the shit that you went, you were hoping not to do getting out of school. I mean, it was good because we all have construction backgrounds, bro. Like I started working in construction like summertime, seventh grade two in the summers, like roofing, fucking like carpentry work. So like we had construction background, like we could do it all ourselves. They make the best growers, a yeah. handyman, you know, guys that yeah. are like that. Yeah. Like sixth grade was my last summer, like of no work. And then seventh grade summers, like I was like during the summers, every summer I worked. Yeah. Damn, bro. So you and your cousin pop some seeds and where's it going now? Are we putting some, like you, you got the 16, it goes eight lights and 16. Is that the first grow was underneath that house? Yeah. Holy shit. My first house, like I bought, I saved up and bought that house. Like that's what I did with all my money that I made when I was young. I put it into that house. Damn, and I got bro. it during the, you know, the financial crisis, the subprime mortgage crisis. And like, I had hella cash. So like, and back then, Oakland houses were going for like 100 bands, 100, maybe 150 in like in a nicer spot. Now you can't get shit for like, ha- like less than like a half a mil, 600,000. Yeah, there's like a lot of gentrification now. But back then, bro, it was like you fifty, hundred thousand $100,000 houses all day long. And how are you learning how to grow? Are you like, how are you even learning like any parts of it? Are you, you just reading online? Are you, you got yeah, any- that's why I told you, like I was on the forums hella heavy. I see mag THC farmer. Like I had a profile there. I was like scared to post pictures, but I would like, you know, talk about different methods. Like I was on there pretty heavy. And like, that's where I kind of got my baseline for growing is on there. You probably ran into every single problem a grower can run into under there that first time. Like, I mean, just having an exposed grow plus lights, underneath yeah, the back house then it was like, that's for hard, sure back man. then it was in and out vents bro like mm-hmm. everyone rocking in and out vents and like i was one of the first people i knew that's that sealed sealed the rooms yeah because i was watching some videos from canada and a lot of those dudes were sealing their rooms and i was like bro fuck it i'm gonna i'm gonna try that tech down here because everyone was running in and out vents and then once like i sealed the rooms it was over bro that was the, the biggest game changer right there yeah, you I mean, know, in and out vents, bro. No you're more sucking PM. in. Yeah, yeah, not just that, but like during the winter time, it's cold, damp air. Like you're never sucking in ideal, ideal air. I can't imagine like pickaxing and shoveling no. that out. Like you're talking like, because I've been, I've seen underground work and how it goes. Like there's like layers of, <laughs> you know, the earth basically, and it's like 
you're going down deep in there. So how how tall did it end up being? We dug it out to eight and a half foot ceilings. Oh my from god, three feet. And how and how big was the the oh, room? Like because sixteen lights is thirty five feet wide by like full basement sixty long, fifty sixty long, something like that. Full basement build oh, out, yeah, whole basement. done by hand, and then the house realize. that it was under was paid for by the homie himself too. But that was the tough part, bro, that I was nervous about. But my cousin was doing all like the support work. I was like, bro, like I don't want to dig this shit out, and the house collapses on us. <laughs> you, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. For real he, he r.i.p he died at the grow underneath the house yeah, he you did. know what i'm saying the thing collapsed on him 16 lights bro died in the house collapse <laughs> digging out a 16 lighter holy <laughs> fuck bro yo that's crazy that is a crazy story yeah that's a that's but probably we had someone like we had one of our friends that was a little older like a contractor showing us they showed us how to support the the house while we were digging yeah so shout out him or else we might not be here today <laughs> You got the craziest first grow of anybody so far on the show. Real talk. Hands yo. down, big dog. Just yes. so you know. <laughs> bro, I'm not even close. Yeah. Bro, like the crazy thing is at the time, it didn't even seem like a big deal. Like it was just like, all right, this is what we got to do to make a grow room. Because we were young as fuck. Like no one was going to rent us houses like that. And like back then you had to really know someone to like get access to houses and stuff like that. And like we were too young, like to the point where people that owned houses wouldn't take us serious because like we were too young. Yeah. You you know you 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 remind me of the guys where they they'll like pull up like thirty two massive trailers that have been buried under the ground that they turn into grows. You see, you read those stories where you're like, how in the fuck? And people are always like, it's impossible. How would that guy do that? That's how he does it right there. You're motivated, motivated. Yeah. This is how this is this is what we got to do. There's no other way. Yeah, it's just like if it needs to get done, you got to do it. Like, yeah, damn, bro. So you and your cousin, you still rock into this day. So you guys are growing, learning off each other. Yeah. I mean, like my cousin was gone for like seven years plus, And he came back last summer. So now we're back together. Man. Hell so now yeah. Now it's lit. Yeah. Jeez, man. That's more than, that's more like my brother than my cousin. Shout out, bro. You know who you are. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. I mean, you digging out the fucking base. Dig out a basement yeah. together. You're gonna get close for sure. Yeah. Deep bond. Yeah. yeah. Yo. So, so where? So he had to, he had to go sit down for seven. Yeah. Gone for seven. Fucking that's a. tough. Glad to have you back, big dog. Grower to grower. Glad to hear this, man. Yeah. And so. So what what's happening then now? So you guys start to learn and you you guys are, is it, hey, let's get another spot? Is it? Yeah, bro. That's right when we had, the, like, we didn't spend our money. Like, we just stacked our money up how we did our whole life. And then the dude that helped us buy the house, he owned commercial properties. And then there was a, a warehouse on 71st, close to E1. And then bro gave us a chance and rented us that warehouse out. So that was like, we went from four lights, 16 light house. And then we jumped into a 24 light warehouse. Hell yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what kind of lights are you rocking at this time? Are we going, are we double ended HPS? Oh, hell nah, bro. That shit does not even anywhere <laughs> close to exist. That shit was fucking adjust the wings. Yeah. Single ended fucking thousand Watts. Yeah, people they call them the bats, right? Yeah, and yeah look those up. Those are the old school ones. Yeah, people no with lie, the magnetic. Bro, like I, was, I used to look at uh Ivan's bro, I I'd be on Ivan's uh IC mag profile so tough. If anyone says they weren't, they're lying, bro. Like every everyone was on his page. He had the craziest to, looking grow. You're yeah, like bro, how Ivan had would post bigger <laughs> grows than anyone would dream about posting, bro. Yep. So like he was probably the most popular person ever on the forums. Like Cause you're like, how do you even grow this big at the time? You're like, yeah. I don't, you know, everyone had like a room or at a house or rooms at houses or a house. Not many people had like a warehouse, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's like but next like, level. Yeah. Like he influenced my, like my grow tech a lot. Like I would see, like, I saw him rocking the just wings. So I'm like, like I went from ventilated hoods to just wings. Cause like I saw that and I'm like, okay. Man, big bro, shout every, out Jungle Boys, out Ivan. Ivan. Yeah. yeah, bro, everyone followed your lead. I don't care what anyone says. Mm. <laughs> yep, bro, he's the reason Still I started popping day. seeds, bro. bro that White Fire Forty Three uh, Pheno Hunt was the reason I started popping seeds. Damn, Phew. big ups. Yeah, 
Bro, I used to like, bro, I bought white fire seeds, but mind you, I'm up in the Bay and the only way to get white fire seeds back then was there's sporadic little drops at different dispensaries here and there in LA. So like I drive all the way down from Oakland to LA just to buy like two packs of white fire, the white they had. Uh, and that's OG Rascal, right? Yeah. OG yeah, Rascal. Yeah, man. Bro. Big shout out OG Rascal because he makes it. Yeah, it is difficult. You can't get those seeds. Yeah, like bro, you can OG barely Rascal find them. was like, bro, one of the most sought after seed companies at the time. Like, I feel like he really kicked off like the hype seeds gas straight gasoline yeah. all his stuff is like like shit that you could never get access to yeah like he 30 percenters yeah yeah he's he's a OG. so I mean, so you chase that white fire oh yeah bro like about that and then my other first big pheno hunt was cookies and cream by exotic genetics and then i flew up to seattle he had this little like event i flew up i bought 12 packs came back popped 12 packs Cause like, that's why, like I always tried to, I saw what Ivan did with the white fire and you know, he was doing, you know, he wasn't growing like 10 different seeds of 10 different strains where he was really digging in, like doing hundred seed phenol hunts of one strain. So I was like, okay, that's the route I'm gonna take. So like, I never did little Damn. small phenol hunts, bro. I always like tried to pop a minimum of 50, but ideally like I'd pop a hundred. So you could get like every expression. People don't get that. Like what you're doing, like that's some OG knowledge shit you decided to go with right off rip. Just to be honest, because like you're pheno hunting a pheno that you're like, I want to find a winner instead of just scratching the surface of a bunch of random stuff that I'm kind of like, you're looking for a true keeper right off rip. Like, yeah. I mean, that's like veteran hunters and veteran growers. That's like what they do. I, I'm surprised to hear you do that, man. That's yeah. That's I mean, dope. like I said, bro, I saw Ivan do that. It made sense to me. So I'm like, okay, that's the route I'm gonna take when it comes to popping seeds. Yeah. And I mean, how how could we deny it? Look at RS eleven and Zope. I mean, they're brother and sister too. What, what? the RS eleven is the F one generation of the Rainbow Sherbert and the Zope is the F two generation. And for the F three generation I used Zope as the receiver. So we'll get into all that. Yeah. What what year was this when you're when you're doing this hundred C Fino hunts and Bro Because White um, Fire, that was a that was a minute ago. What, 2014, 2015, something like that? 2013? Yeah, I don't honestly even remember the year, bro, but I just remember it when when the White Fire packs were available. So I ran the SoCal White SoCal Master. There was a couple of Finos in there I wish I kept. <laughs> I bought a bunch of the whites. The whites were just very chalky, very hashy. I had one crazy little strawberry pheno that I wish I held on to from the white S1s. And then the one I went hardest on was white fire. But bro, those seeds were hard to track down. Like at most, like you wouldn't get more than like two packs from, from a spot. The only place I knew of getting them was through Jungle Boys. Like back in the day at TLC, uh -huh. they would carry them, but prop 215 days. And that was the only place I even like it living in SoCal. You could even find them to my, you know, that I knew of. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, like it would just be like, I would call around all the dispensaries and like some would like, it would be little hole in the wall dispensaries that would have packs of his seeds. Like a bunch of like, you know, dispensaries in the Valley. It was a bunch of spots like that. They would just, you know, randomly have like two packs. So then just like, I ended up collecting like 10 packs total. And I'm like, all right, bro, that's enough. Like I'll pop them. You'd call all the different dispensaries and be like, do you have, do you have this strain or these packs of seeds? I on mostly the like ask around on the forum, like, Hey bro, where you guys think I could get this? And they'd send me like different places that might have it. Then you just got to call Man. around, bro. And just figure it out. <laughs> You're the hunt before the hunt. Yeah. yeah. But I want to say during that era, like, oh, like OG Rascal seeds were probably like the holy grail in terms of seeds. Yeah. At now least in California. More. Shit, now they're even harder to get. For real? I mean, I don't, I don't know where to get them now. I mean, there might be a seed bank or two, but Neptune, maybe. But I mean, you got to hunt them down. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, and I know with you, so, so where's it go from there? I know like, let's walk down that line. So you're hunting down OG rascal, right? White fire 43, your cousin's still around. You starting to put out 43 yet? Did you guys find stuff? Yeah. I had my own white fire, you know? Yeah. So I was rocking that for a while. I had a cookies and cream number 106. So that's the, another one that frosted out. Yeah, bro. That shit was a fucking 
bro, like a glacier. <laughs> but like the, a lot of those strains were really hashy too. Like for that, like that pheno in today's market, like people would consider it like not terpy enough. But back then people would just mind blown off how the plant, how the flower looked. Yeah. That, that, that made a lot of money for a lot of people. Washers, hash mm -hmm. washers, ice wax. That was. Oh yeah. They loved the, the cookies and cream, bro. They loved it. And they would do, they do dry sift back then too. And that shit used to dump for them. They, like dry sift. It looked like little sand grains. I don't know like how they did it, but. I seen guys where they'll take a balloon and they rub a piece of metal on the balloon and they'll get the static electricity clinging to the piece of metal and then they'll run it over the dry sift and all the plant material will suck up onto the because of the static electricity oh, yeah, and what you'll have left is just beautiful full heads and i've seen people clean up dry sift that way with static electricity and I, i'm saying some people i'm saying the best dry sift in the world i've seen done like that yeah. where it's like you could breathe on it heavy hot and it would go into full melt you know like yeah. real but yeah static electricity trippy yeah. dry was, sift is like you know you're talking but them dry sift dudes wow. would keep their cards close to their chest like they would not tell you their like their practices at all mm -mm. yeah even now that yeah. what i just told you a bunch of people are gonna be upset yeah. just to be honest yeah yeah but so hash monsters though you're rocking cookies and cream i mean to this day is just a sought after strain for anyone doing hash yeah are you doing bho yet or are you guys like you just wanted those for flour yeah we never really got into bho but because you know cookies was really heavy in oakland like oakland was like purple city bro like granddaddy purple like that's all anyone ever wanted so like i grew up on granddaddy so like we used to grow granddaddy too i forgot about that you had the granddaddy phase, the Urkel, the Kush phase, that sour phase. Bro, for like probably like two years, I was, you know, had one facility growing hella sour. Yeah. And like my old, like my Kush cuts would all come down here. I mean, not my cuts, my Kush packs would all come down here to like different dispensaries that I had relationships with. And they used to like, like usually make that their flagship strain, like. So and so dispensary Kush, <laughs> yeah. So like when I stopped serving them, like they'd get you know a big sad because, like, damn. How are you finding help? It's you and your cousin, right? And you guys want to expand. How do you even trust somebody? Just cousins. Like we didn't hire anyone like outside our family or anything. This is yeah. fam. It was especially in Oakland, scandalous, bro. You can't really trust people. Like they'll set you up. So it's like we try to. You know, don't let anyone know where any spots are. We never tour any spots. You don't even want to show anyone spots. Like back then, I wouldn't even go to people's spots because then when they got robbed, they'd blame you. Like I wouldn't even go to other right. people's spots. Like Jeez. it's just, I don't want anyone looking at me funny when they get stripped. <laughs> Damn, man. That's, that's really how it was. Yeah. So you start jumping in your family, basically. Yeah, cousins. Yeah. Yeah that so that can go either way i know for a fact that can either go really good and they learn to love growing weed for a living or you, that kind of ends you guys relationship sometimes yeah it went both ways just yeah. different individuals mm -hmm. yeah cultivation of cannabis is like very different than you think from the outside it's a, it's a rough yeah. living and in oakland too like people's more short-sighted bro like they they think like people used to say like oh like i don't want to wait three months this money's too slow like so that was a big a big it was hard finding help because people up there would like especially at our age just wanted quick money and, you and know, people like looking to take other, advantage like, three months was too long for them to wait for a check so like yeah damn three month check people ain't having it yeah like in real life bro like in like the regular world like come on Getting like a bunch of money in three months is like quick. In yeah. real business. Yeah, there you go. You know, you got to be in business, I feel like. But yeah. being in business for yourself, yeah, that's that's a trick. Yeah, but up in Oakland, like, you know, people want like in one day to come up like, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 bands. And like they could do it too. So it's just like some people take that route. Hustlers. Yeah. Like, nah, they just like strip other people. Like they just rob oh, a lot up there. So shit. like. You hit a lick and you could come up like fifty thousand dollars in a night. Like, like they rather take that route than you know, trim or wait like three months for money to come back. 
Man, can you imagine if that's a mentality though? That's a tough mentality to grow up I mean, around. Bro, that's bro. like a rite of passage up there. Honestly, is hitting licks. Like it's just it's like like a rite of passage. Like damn near everyone does it. Ex explain stripping because I never really heard that term coming from the East Coast. Like, like they call it jacked, you know what I mean, or whatever. Jack, and it's the same thing. Yeah, all the same shit. Yeah. What What do you think brought that term about? Because that's a different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Like, cause if because if I say like, I'm gonna jack someone, it's it's kind of like more negative connotation versus mm -hmm. I'm gonna strip them. It's almost like you're taking back what's yours or something, or I don't know. It's a little different, well, right? It's, not it's, just, it's, it's no one's issue. Yeah, no big it's deal. like I'm just stripping them. You yeah, know? yeah. But it's if I'm like, jacking them, people might look at me like I'm a bad. You know, I don't know. It's well, just like you know, hit a lick. I'm a I'm gonna strip them. It's like just like guess different. But even like, that, that's a positive. Hit a slang. lick is positive. There, even though it's off of somebody else. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. More cool saying it's stripping. I don't know. Maybe because like stripping cars, like. And it just, it's just a different it's term. Just like a terminology yeah. way yeah. to look at it. But I'm just saying because you say a lot of people are on that up there. I'm trying to oh, yeah. wrap my head around why. And it's got to be like a, younger kids. Yeah, like, it's got to be a culture that's situation. Like, like for like 18, like to 25, like that's like a big thing. And they, I'm sure they get recruited by people and you know the older homies and shit. Or like yeah, like people like you know influence them and you know it's got to I mean, be smart now. Like they could figure their own plays yeah. out now like they got that shit down to the science that's sad like people like up there like bro they'll gps tag your car like back when i was younger like people you know would go around with the infrared guns and looking at how hot the cables are at nighttime like, people don't even know about that you want to talk about that for a minute i know about that too yeah, it's like bro, let's talk about that ahead of their times in terms of all that kind of stuff yeah you're talking about when people would scan with a thermal imaging camera it's yeah. thermal imaging and they and what they're doing is you're basically looking at different houses and you're and which one is and pulling power yeah and it's like what kind of spot other than grow is going to be having a red hot cable at 3 a.m nobody so that's how like a bunch of people you know even spots. just normal your cable if you got six to eight lights in your house will be 10 to 20 times brighter than anybody else on oh, your street sure, don't bro. even it's matter gonna, if they got two pools it's gonna grow up yeah, yeah. And, and you can you can see it it looks like a, a light beam from a, a tower like it's 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 lighting up the yeah, night like, when you look at line it will light up the whole like from the yeah. whole street it would be easy to view it so people are going around and and basically filming houses or filming the outside of houses and seeing like, yo, we think this is a potential. It was lick. like they had like live IR cameras that wow. you could just like just look. It's scary days, man. I yeah. remember we used to wrap. We like would think like to wrap the walls, certain, like yeah, industrial areas where there's known grows and you know people just go from roof mm -hmm. to roof, like listening for fans. Yep, yeah. smelling ACs. Sounds like downtown now, like LA. They, now the easiest way is just like they GPS shit. It's like the tech is hella easy. What's that? Just put a magnet GPS under someone's car. Damn. And then they just follow it? Yeah. Because some of those GPSs last up to like a couple months. So you could track someone for months. Damn, bro. Yeah. So what do we, I mean, scary times, man, <laughs> for real. Shit makes, I'm, man, it, it gets sucks, me back bro, into my just... Florida paranoid state of like. Nah, yeah, you got me. Yeah. My head's spinning right yeah, now. Yeah, because I'm like, man. Because LA it's not is really not sweet either. It's not really paranoid. It's just being safe. You like, know you what a big thing? Cover all, like, park you don't want to expose yourself. Yeah, park inside at night. Someone used to put me up on that. Don't leave your car outside at oh, night. Oh, not just that. At all of our spots, like someone would sleep there. They would never be unattended at night ever. That's big, bro. Yeah, People crucial. don't know that. They leave. At, I've learned that. And then they come back to an empty house. Yeah. It's like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. You've you've dealt with some of that in the past as well, coming up through, through you know, coming back to grows that have been hit. I mean, yeah, you hear sure. that about that all the time and you see it all the time. Like, yeah. you know when a grow spot gets hit because it's fucking the next morning, like, fucking leaves all over the streets. Like, you know, like the door's broken down or like you see like a like a you know particle board covering where the door got knocked in some growers out front crying <laughs> yeah, like, yeah and it's just bro, yeah. like it's not that big of a town so like word gets around quick like people if someone like it's it's not that big of a place it's not like la we don't have huge industrial areas it's like a lot of the grows are limited to the certain industrial areas so it's just like where people are going to know that you're growing it's just how like how you keep safe like you want to limit your exposure because a lot of times people will pick the lowest hanging fruit and you don't want to be that. 
Mm. Like if you make it like more difficult to hit your spot and then, you know, down the street, there's a easier opportunity. People will gravitate towards like the easier one. Yeah. On game. Right there. But you just want to just be safe, bro. Just don't expose yourself. I mean, dude, with what you said around the pandemic to in Oakland, I mean, if you oh, can make it through a, Oakland and shit like that, you, you're the man. I mean, on those riots with like chaos, like I've never seen like that level of chaos before. Dudes on on roofs with ARs and shit, you said. If they're the, the smart ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, because I mean, the cops aren't coming. So if they break in your grow, oh, it's but a the cops, like if you call 911, like you just get like busy signals, like they're not coming for anyone. Like they're over, like they're overextended. Like they're not even capable of showing up. Cause you know, like groups of like 80 people are, are going to rob one spot. Like what's like two units going to do against like a hundred people. It's just, it was like chaos. People and it's not. We're not talking just black market either. We're talking white market grows. So white most market. Of, most of the spots getting robbed were were legal spots. Exactly. Because people knew where they were. Think about that. People are like no, nah, but that's you know that's what you get when you're in the game and when you're nah man. This is a legal spot that pays taxes and pays for that those cops to actually show up and they weren't showing well, up. Honestly, the cops up there were saying were like if you called and said you had to grow and that someone's trying to rob the cops would just tell you straight up like. Yo, we can't come. Like, we're not going to come to any grow related incident. Like, like if someone tries to break in, shoot them. Like, that's what police were saying. Like, wow. We, like, I know a couple legal growers that like, that's the response they got from the city. And it's just like, bro, the city was just over, like the police force is overextended. Like, they can't do anything about that. Like 20 cars pulls up to a grow spot. Like, it's hard to like shut that down. You said there were crews fighting over being able to rob certain spots. Oh, like yeah. there were two different crews are showing up to hit one spot yeah, and, then and they they're both arguing over it. They, you know, of yeah. who, gets the, who gets to go in. Bro. So then they start fighting with each other before they even go in. Yeah, bro, it was real chaos, like real chaos. A lot of people don't know that side of the cultivation like, bro, side like, of things. Even like, like, you know, like the legal spots that... Oh, we got security guards like do the up there like the security guards don't really matter like people don't really that's not really much of a deterrent like they just don't care it's a target jeez yeah. especially it's like two security guards versus like 40 people it's like they're gonna roll it up they're not gonna like it's it's a lose-lose situation so you got to basically, you get your crew and everyone needs to either protect the bag or, or give it up. Like yeah. Give it up. It's like, just give it up or else you got to really stand your ground. Like for real, for real. Cause you can't halfway, you know, you can't halfway go protect your shit. You got to like fully commit or just say, fuck it. It's the danger is not worth the money and just let them have it. So it's really only two choices. Well, protect that Zope and that RS11. <laughs> that's for damn sure, man. Yeah, Holy no shit. On me. I still, I'm good. They're definitely smelling that too. That's a, that's a carbon filter killer. That Zope, yeah. it's got to be. Bro, I don't, I mean, we haven't used carbon filters forever. We use it to scrub the rooms. But yeah. There's no like air exchange. Like all the rooms are sealed. And once you're in the rooms for so long, bro, like you stop smelling shit. At least <laughs> I do. I'm so desensitized to the smell. Like I could walk into a grow room and it's harder for me to smell shit. Like, just cause I'm like, it's so normalized to me. But like, I'll always smell, smell like weed and like, I don't smell anything. Like, I'll know I smell like <laughs> weed when I'm walking and everyone's just staring at me and I'm like, oh, bro, fuck. I probably stink. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. You probably smell like fresh weed too. Oh like yeah, growing weed. Big difference. Yeah, because you know that resin gets on your clothes and your skin, bro. Like it makes your hair stick together on your arms. Fresh bag of soap, <laughs> raw, a raw bag of soap. Holy shit, bro! I, you'd stink the most like on your D leaves, bro. Like you know, that's why I would try to do D leaves on like day twenty one before the resin really got too crazy. Because if you waited too much longer than that, all your plants are just super resinous and like it's harder to work. Like your fingers stick together more. It's just that smell will stay on you, bro. No matter what you do. Oh, those shirts are ruined. That long sleeve shirt you oh, use damn. is ruined that day. And, and like, I, you to, ain't getting I it back. never wore long sleeve shirts cause it was hot as fuck in there. So I'd be in there, no shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Catching a tan. Yeah, you know, I'd be, it'd be like around week, you know, 
around day 21, I'd be at like, you know, 65 during the daytime, 65 plus percent humidity, 78, sometimes 80 degrees. VPD. So it's like, bro, it was like working in the jungle. So it was, As like, a, I couldn't have a long sleeve shirt on. Yeah. I mean, dude, no, that, you know, paradise is paradise, right? Yeah. And be able to have a shirt with some sandals or something. Yeah. Could you do me a favor though? Because I'm, I'm a huge fan of the two strains that you guys are known for. RS 11 came first. Yeah. Can you take us back to like was, when you found that? All right. So it started off. I went to Emerald cup and I bought third gen OZ Kush seeds. I bought 12 packs. Stood in line, bro. It was the most popping booth at the whole event. I bought like 12 packs. I think they were hitting for like 500 a piece. And so I had like 120 C's. I got back and popped those. I found uh, the number 40 Fino. Bro, it was insane. Like it was, bro, it smelled like straight Kern's guava juice, pink guava juice. So I was like, bro, this one's crazy. Like. Like I'm keeping this, like I needed to do some with it. Like I knew out gates that like I needed to do some with the number 40. So then I like, you know, flowered out all my males, check structure and all that. And the number 55 male was the best of the bunch. 55 and I picked uh, two others. Like I tend to take like two or, you know, two or three different males and use them. Like in the early stages of like, you know, making a new line. You know, everyone got their own methods, but that's mm -hmm. just what I choose to do. Like, I really try to get the variety out because sometimes your male is not what you think it's going to be. Like, you could have a male, you think it's going to be him, and then it turns out to be like a dud, and then you just got to scratch the whole project. So, like, that's why just to better my odds, I picked like three males. So then I made the OZ Kush F2s, and like, I called those the pink guava. So, then like, I ran a hundred of those. And, you know, I picked a male from that I, and picked two males from that and hit it to the original, the Sunset Sherbert. And that's how like the F1 generation of the RS was created. That's where we found like the 11, the 54. My phenols were the 16. I had number 40. And my number 19 is Jelly Roll. So like, that's a strain that I'm about to roll out this year. So like this year, like on rec, I'm gonna roll out a bunch of strains that, you know, people didn't get to try from that era just cause like they didn't have access to it. So I'm gonna try to, you know, before I put a bunch of, I'm about to put a bunch of new strains out too, like some crazy shit I'll tell you about, but like, I'm trying to get my classic ones, you know, to the public too, so they could try what, you know, they didn't have access to back then. The You said studio 54, right? That was the 54? Yeah, that's a sister of 11. Boom. Man, people, they need to know this, though. That's a lot of hits, man. Look at that cross. That cross, is that's huge winners. Yeah, bro. 11, 54, Jelly Roll, all that came off the RS line. The, the number 40 and the 16. And, and the 16 is what I used in the, in the F2. Yeah, could you go into that now with us? Yeah, Just the keep 16 walking. was more like a real candy sh sherbet uh, female. So that's kind of at the time what I was looking for. So like I used that as the receiver to make the F2 line of the RS. Damn. Yeah. And the F2 line of the RS is where the Zope came out. It's Fino 21. Big drop right there. Yeah. That thing is exceptional. That's yeah. a 10 out of all 10s. Honestly. Yeah. We Maybe saw in the winter, bro, people start getting to try some of the F3 line. Because the Zope was the receiver for the F3 line. You... Could you explain that just a little bit for us? So people, uh, yeah, I know people, cause I, you know, there's a lot of just smokers and they would, they mm. would love for, so you mean oh, RS11 you like is and receivers. The mom, yeah. Just the mom and the dad for the RS11. So the donor the is like what's donating the pollen. It's like the male mm -hmm. and the receiver is like the female that's taking the pollen. And so for the RS11, it was what? Pink guava. Pink guava was the donor or the pink guava male yeah. is pollinating the number RS number 16. Damn. Yeah, which was the receiver because it's receiving the pollen. Yeah. There we go. Absolutely. And so you still have seeds from that Zope run? I got all of them. I save all my seeds. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I got a whole freezer full. Oh, bro. 
<laughs> bro, I got seeds back from like 2015 to like that. Like I still just didn't get around to. This dude does too for sure. Oh yeah, that's why I'm I'm dying. Spent man. That's why this because tens you know, of thousands. But, but oh, I know hundreds. what you got. People would would jog to California for the RS11 yeah. and the for original and the Zope, the original draw. I mean, have you ever thought about doing a little seed drop? Exactly. No. What no about seed drops? What? He's like, man, we just did the clone. Why drop. But most <laughs> seed drops. This is the thing though. Most Negative. breeders or most growers would say, I need to remake the RS11 and remake the Zope. And then I'm going to go ahead and release them so that people can chase their own Zope and RS11 phenos. And I'm going to make a couple million dollars in the meantime. Yeah, I just don't. That's I'm not just doing everything in house. Like, like I breed everything in house. Mm -hmm. I select everything in house. Do my own designs, do my own packaging. Like, I just do all that in house. You've been that's like what that separates from me from everyone else is mm -hmm. like everyone else that was doing breeding work released their gear and like i was one of the only ones that just kept it in house like i don't think i know anyone else that kept all their seeds in house i just was never mm -hmm. in it for like a quick quick flip of money like, it's about yeah. your crew eating yeah bro because it's like like it's more than money to me just because it was like rough getting to that level it's like, bro, you know, like when you bleed over shit, bro, like it's, it means more to you than if, you know, than if it comes easy. It's like, you can't wave like a hundred bands in my face for some seeds like that. It doesn't even really phase me. Ooh. Yeah. Morals. Like, bro, there's been times where I got offered like a quarter million bucks for certain cuts. I'm like, nah, it's good. Wow. That's dope though. Yeah. You know, just now, to know. Right now I got my own unique menu that's rolling out and it's just like, it can't really be duplicated because I never released my building blocks for those strains. And when you say rolled out, like where will people be able to go to get that? Like, like, what's that for Rec? It's gonna or? Be like, yeah, Rec. Like uh, it's going to be a bunch dropping down here. At, like the cook, uh, cookie Melrose, the cookie stores, backpack boy stores. Hell. So we're going to be able to see all your stuff, oh, like your, that. the stuff you've been holding on to and the phenos that you need. All oh that. man. Yeah, all that. I'm going to uh, start off rolling out like eight strains. It's going to be the 5.7, which is my, sh that's probably my favorite strain beside from the Zope and the RS is the 5.7. It's a uh, Rainbow Sherbert BX1 number three. I called it Black Sherbert and then cross to, no, that was the receiver. And then my boy from the forums, he sent me some animal cookie pollen that he reversed. So I pollinated the the black sherbet or the sherbet BX1 number three with the animal cookie pollen. And I popped those seeds and the 57th phenol was the keeper. So it's going to be rolling out the 5.7, the jelly roll, bringing the pink guava back. Obviously, Zope, uh, a strain called 580, which is... Uh, strain called the y shout out y life 365 he's the the one that made that and he's the one that gave me the cut that's a hard yeah. cut to get that so, is a big strain the to have one, the dude that got the real one it's uh his instagram's at y life 365 and then you know who used to have that back in the day og cookie monster Real? The Cookie Monster, the big yeah, homie. Bro, I never got to meet, bro. I heard a lot about him. Once in a while, he'd yeah. have wildlife packs. That's the only time I had seen it. And he would, even for him, it was rare because I he would once in a while have it at the secret sesh. And that was the one where I'd be like, I have to, I would, I would have to buy some. I'd never seen this. Yeah. Down in SoCal, never. It's definitely unique, like for sure. It's a gelato, correct? But it's like a weird, now, funky. Coming from, uh, coming from the guy that, that made it, like Wildlife 365, it's a cherry pie to F1 Durban. That's what he told me the lineage was. That makes way more sense when you smell it because it is so different. Yeah. So that's what he told me that it was. So you're going to have that on the menu. Not that exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, he's going to run his, his wildlife. Mm -hmm. Like that's his strain, but I've been working with it for a while. Like, you know, I gave him some of my BX2 seeds and like every generation that I make, you know, I'm going to kick him some seeds back. And, you know, so he could come up with his own cuts too. But the 580 is basically like a YBX1 cross to a, a male YBX1. So you're getting kind of like inline breeding type shit. That, that's everyone's after that wildlife, yeah. just so and you the know. Out, the the outcross <laughs> of the wildlife was, uh, 
was Thin Man. Damn, dude. Yeah. And I collaborated uh, on that wildlife project. I collaborated with my boy, uh, Charlie, from up in Oregon, uh, TKO. Yeah. Well, do you know what that's his name on Instagram? Yeah, TKO, TKO. from Oregon. Yeah. Okay, it's and like he's an Oregon grower. When you say collab, one one put puts up the pile and the other puts up the donor. Yeah, it's like you know, we just did this breeding project together. Like Man, I love that. Yeah, and like every generation, you know, we share the the genetics, share our findings, you know, kick each other cuts, go back and forth. What like, makes you want to do that with somebody? Like you just see something they have, and you're like, yeah, that that would be a good pollen donor or a good yeah, receiver. Not just that, but Charlie, like he's kind of like similar mentality to me like you know like trustworthy good people like someone that you know that i get along with yeah people always ask where collabs come from and and like one of the big things that's uh pat gods always talks about stuff is it's very organic things yeah. are like they happen organically and like the, those are where the true collabs and like the the true spirit of this comes from yeah. and that seems like charlie from tko like early on he had like you know he was doing some work with jigga and Jigga came and dropped some cuts, some seeds off, and some pollens off. So Charlie actually kicked off the whole Y, you know, Y project, because he got some Y pollen. And then he dusted it to the Thin Mint, the original Thin Mint from those guys. And then, like, that's how the BX1 started was from Charlie, TKO, Oregon. Man, that's huge. And we're still, bro, we're still going back and forth with that project. And that was like five, like a while ago. When uh, when's this line dropping? Because it's like, oh, be, I got to get a hold of that. That's going to be this year. So like the two ones are 880. That's a little more Thin Mint Dom. And the 580 is like, bro, it smells like rotten cherry, cherry pie, hint of gas. It's like very complex. Man. Yeah. If you could bring one strain back. Dirty cookie. That'd be the one, huh? <laughs> Bro, that's the one. That's the one that got away. And it yeah. was cookie-ish or was it just so different? Bro, than it's like, I can't really explain it, bro. Yeah. It kind of smelled like cookie, like if you open up an oven of like cookie BHO, like that's how the flowers smell. It was crazy. Wow. Man, cookies is such a distinct strain, something that yeah. is, and I see you use it a lot in throughout your breeding, I, the thin yeah, mint, the cookie, like animal is, pollen. Yeah, that's a staple, bro, for sure. Like, especially in Oakland, like- mm -hmm. First, it was all granddaddy. And yeah. after that, it was all cookie. Straight up. Bro, a long time. Girl yeah. Scout. What do you think about it? Like, Girl Scout? Because through the years, mm -hmm. I mean, because like, you're bro, using like different lines of strain, it. Bro, like, how many people, like, damn near every current strain has girl, like cookies in it. Everything. Like, it's, it's probably structure. I want to say, bro, like, the, some of the most defining strains of, like, our lifetime is OG and cookies is another one. Yeah. In terms of, like, what's popular now. It's a handful, five or ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's and the cookies is at the top. Yeah, it, but like it's I like love that you're like thin building mint building blocks for sure. Yeah. yeah, that thin mint cut though. What's up with that? I still got it. Oof. Yeah. How's the flower on it? Good. Just that real like that thin mint from like back in the day. <laughs> I was about to say, man. Like, where's the Girl Scout? I got that cookie. one, and I got the the animal cut the animal cookie cut from Straight Flame. Like he kept that one around. So he ran me that cut back. Every time I lost it, he would run me a slice back. That in the cherry kush, straight flame. Shout out Tone, straight flame. Yeah. I drove up to the bay for that cherry kush cut yeah. to, to get the drop from that. That was from I Tone. I ended up losing it, but I wish I had it still. Yeah, I still got it. Nah. There you yeah, go. Tone's gonna do some things with that this year for sure. That's just gonna be crazy. That's one that I'm looking forward to seeing, like what happens. Yeah. So I just pollinated a cherry kush female with wildlife BX2 pollen. So I want to like I'm excited about that one too. Damn, dude. A lot of really interesting and and representative the bay. All the stuff you've been repping, every strain is Bay Area hard. Yeah, it's just because I'm from Oakland. So like that influenced a lot of my, you know, a lot of the way that I grew and bred and all that stuff. Yeah. So how does, because like a lot of people will be like, yeah, but then how does like what you guys have built is such a huge thing right now. How does that come about? Because like you, 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 you got this strain, you got RS11, you got Zope going. Where does it come that like, 
wizard trees and and now you got doja you know and, and your whole crew it's it's this massive collab that is so successful bro how does that even how do you even put that together how does that work out bro you don't like put it together intentionally it's just kind of an organic thing that just pops up yeah it's like you know i've been i'm pretty like like i've been friends with wizard trees for a while so that just made sense and you know he had like a lot more production than I did. So it was just like, I'm gonna focus more on the breeding selections. And then he was just really focused on, you know, more produ on the production side. Cause like, he's one of the best, you know, like large scale cultivators out wizard trees for sure. Agreed straight up. Yeah. Like, Shout out to like wizard. He'll scale up bro. But like, like the quality is still like his number one, you know, number concern. one concern for sure. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah. Most of the people that once you get over like a couple hundred lights, they just don't give a fuck. They just try to pump anything out, but like, uh uh. Unsmokable. Yeah, it's like unsmokable at damn near at that point when it gets that big for most people. Yeah. 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 He scales back when the quality. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. shut the shit down. It's because it doesn't take long, bro. You could spend, you know, your whole life building up a reputation. It only takes like a couple bad drops to f fuck it all up. It's, yeah. it's tough. It's tough for for grows and brands right now on just batch to batch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's really what it is. Consistency is hard, especially in like the rec environment now, bro. Like people aren't like growing their own strains like they're outsourcing it. So it's like, say you have, you know, strain A and four different cultivators are growing it and you're doing a buyback program on them and white labeling it like, you know, all four of those you know, growers, like the, the bud's going to come out different. So like you could go, you know, on Monday and buy, you know, some strain A and then come the next week and get like a whole nother product, basically. Doesn't even look like the other one, the same one. Yeah, because none of the, those growers, they're not using the same SOPs or anything like that. So. I so mean, how do you call it the same thing and put it out then? Just because. Or like, can you? Yeah, they do it. Like, yeah. it's, like they don't really have another choice. Like a lot of the brands now, they're not cultivators. So, you know, like they're really good marketers. So like, you know, they got to find, they got to source strains and source growers to grow that strain. And then they market the strain. So like, in my opinion, to be better just to stick with one grower instead of just like, you know, branching out and giving the cuts like five different growers and just, just to try to get your volume up. Cause that's a good way to make strains die, bro. Like if, you know, like people got to be happy with you, with what you sell them. So it's just like, once the, you know, customer and your followers become unhappy, it's just like, you're doing something wrong. And if like, if you don't address it and fix it pretty quickly, like, you know, like it'll die out. A lot of people don't know that that's how and it's a lot your of these fault brands. that it dies out, bro. Like, mm. honestly, like, you know, you're not being consistent. You're not giving them, you know, what you're showcasing. So you can't market it as one thing. And then, you know, like every second, third run, it comes out mids. Like, you know, the people that support you are going to feel played. Like, damn, I'm spending all this money for this. And like, you know, Instagram now, if you get like, a, they buy a shitty fucking eighth, bro, they're going to post a picture of it, put it on Instagram and flame you. Like, yeah. <laughs> 50 pounds of fire, one eighth of bad shit. Yeah. And it'll yeah. stand out. Yeah, like if you, you know, sell like an eighth of smalls, like that shit's going on Instagram and like they're going to come for your life. <laughs> no, for real. Especially yep. if you're taking like fire ass pictures and then when someone actually gets it, it's it's mids like they're going to feel play. Hardest part expose about you. <laughs> hardest part about growing weed, though, is consistency. Oh, for sure. That's the hardest part. It's, it's easy to have a good run, bro. But yes, if you have 10 good runs in a row. Like that's where like. The real experience comes in like how to troubleshoot problems like damn you have an ac that died like how do i mitigate the damage and still you know come out with a good run yeah or what strains to run yeah. what's selling what can we get our numbers on what can we get for this versus this but this puts out more weight than this there's like such nuances to cultivation that most people like like i, I don't think a lot of people like what you just mentioned people understand like you said a lot of the the brands don't grow their own product. Like, yeah, they don't. They go to a place and they literally just pick out bags and look at pounds. And so like, yeah, this would be good for the brand. Yeah, like there might be, you know, strain A that they get from a big, you know, thousand light facility in 
that strain A might be, you know, four different strains on the dispensaries under four different companies. And it's the same strain from the same batch. So like, that's kind of how rec is now. Yeah, it's wacky. That's why yeah. Rec needs to turn it up. <laughs> Holy hell. And then, you know, a lot of this, like the, when you buy a lot of, like, you know, weed on Rec, like, like they don't disclose, like, the genetics. Like, they'll even say, like, all, you know, genetics undisclosed. Or, like, they don't disclose what it is. And it's because they might not even know what it is or it's just because, you know, they're, they're white labeling it. And then they don't want to make it seem like, you know, like, this is just, like, a generic strain that we got and we renamed and make made a design for it yeah aka lemon cherry gelato or runts that's what's, <laughs> that's what's in the bag i promise you if they're not telling you Shout what the genetics the runts, are man. yeah, yeah. Gang. so many people copy that LB, bro, they started like a huge wave holy for real, hell for real. yeah i mean almost as big as this the, the, like we travel the world and it's like you see four or five bags and runts you bro, see, bro, that's, bro, that's bro. another strain that I would say our era bro, is like, bro, yeah. runs, bro, for worldwide, you know bro, I mean? runs is like probably has the most name recognition right now. Zope has a lot too, bro. Much. That that yeah. Zope in Zope Amsterdam is quick. boom. Bro, compared to runs though, bro, like you go anywhere and like you go anywhere in the world and it's like runs, like it's All has day. such name recognition and like yeah. right now, like like the lemon cherry name is kind of you know, getting a lot of traction and stuff like that. It's like the remix, you know what I mean? It was yeah. a way for them to kind of, you know, throw another version out there. Yeah. Cause it's just so, it's just different phenos. But that wasn't, point. that wasn't from re the Runts crew. The lemon cherry wasn't, that was like a, another third party, you know, did their own thing and renamed it lemon cherry. Yeah. What's the, what's the story on that? Uh, Bro, if you guys know, you know, I don't want to like talk about other people <laughs> too much. Like, yeah. Was it, did Canatique make that up? They, uh, they did Canatique the strain? Canatique was the first. They're the lemon cherry. Canatique released lemon cherry. Yeah. The name so they lemon released cherry. on the rec market. Yeah. Yeah. Lemon cherry. Like Canatique came up with the lemon cherry. For sure. They grow like, well. Like the name and the branding and now, all that lemon now cherry. Now I feel like it's just a ton of phenos of lemon cherry whatever well it's like the bro, lemon cherry you know, is you know and it just seems a little watered down at it's this just point. that there's like mass produced packs like you know yeah. thousands of packs are coming out like people find bag like seeds in mm -hmm. in the eighth or something here and there then they grow it out you know try to like a bag seed they grow out their bag seed and you know try to brand their bag seed to make their own strain so like that's kind of how it goes like but there's some people with like some zolt bag seeds and zolt <laughs> rs's yeah it, like, it's probably lot of, not going to be exactly as the same as the bud that came out, but it's going to be like, it's all a numbers game. Like if you pop one seed, your chances of finding like the original are very low. But if you pop like a thousand, your chances are high. It's just like if your parents have one kid, the chances of it looking exactly like you are very low. But if your parents have a thousand kids, bro, like a bunch of them people is going to look like you. <laughs> there you go. So it's like the same with plants. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. A lot of people don't know, and like I bet a lot of people buy pounds looking for seeds too, especially oh, stuff like that. They're like hunting for that Zope or that RS eleven. Bro, seed. that was heavy within the gelato days, bro. Like people would buy gelato zips from Connected just to look for bag seeds. Mm -hmm. Like for sure, that was like an actual thing. Yeah. What do you? How, how do you feel about bag seeds? I mean, I personally don't breed with them just because. I rather just take it the extra time and source the original of what I'm looking for. But I mean, they they could be fun. It's just I don't like basing lines on bag seeds, me personally. But like, you can't really say bad things about bag seeds as a whole because, like, damn near like 99 percent of all the OG f out there is from bag seeds. I mean, you go back to animal. He's talking about ant that we don't know. I guess that might it. Maybe it's not. I don't. You know, you don't know, right? Some of them. There's a lot of question marks around a lot of strains. You're like. Because as a young grower and these guys are young, sometimes you have problems and thanks you know, you have seeds, you can pop those seeds. Yeah. Did you breed it? Yeah, you did, but it's hard to say like, like you could herm a room out. Because people want to hate on you and be like, You didn't breed it, you know, because you you just hermed the room out. And it's like, yeah, but he still then then you found whatever you found out of it. That's a beautiful strain. Yeah. So it's like it's it, just whatever you know? the end product is, if you like it, you like it. You know, however you get there is really up to you. Yeah, I, I just like that. being transparent about everything. Like, I like people, like, 
people that smoke my flower, I like to let them know exactly what it really is. Yeah. That's huge. No, it's big, But I've man. seen a couple backseat Zopes and like, I've seen like two of them. And one of them like looked like a RS-11, but smelled more Sherby. And like they were fire, but it wasn't, they weren't like Zope. They're like another F3 or F2 or something, right? It'd be like that another be S1. So S1. It selfed itself. There you go. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, a lot of people trying to zope it up right now. That's for damn sure. Yeah. So what, what will you give us some hints on like what what are you working on right now? The ones I'm really digging through, I already found three uh keeper phenols is the zope is the receiver. Wildlife BX1 is the donor on some of them. So I got a bunch of Zope Wildlife BX1s and Zope Wildlife BX2s. Oh, bro. I got uh, some Biscotti Wildlife BX1s. I got a pretty fire Basio Wildlife BX1 that's really not Basio leaning. It's really like away from that whole gelato spectrum. Something from its like deep background came out. Yeah, huh? like you could smell a lot of like pie in it. Okay. Yeah, like a lot of richness, pie. But it got a little, you know, maybe like 25% gelato turp in there. Bro, I got a lot. Like, I'm working on a lot of lines. What like happens when you- lines, like the RS lines. Like, I got whole lines that are just their own profiles. Yeah. I like that because I was going to say what, when, what happens when you cross the same strain to itself and like what he's talking about, it starts to bring out the grandparents or the mom oh, and yeah, the dad. Sure. So you start to get weird, funky shit. Like he's saying, you get the Y life and then you get some weird, funky mom or even grandparent of that that comes out. And it's like, where'd this come from? This is nothing like the mom and the dad. It's like, yeah, you're starting to get some weird outputs. Yeah, for from sure, deep bro. Back. Like you get everything in the S1s, bro, like from way back. But it's also too, like I always start my lines with male and female pollen. And then once I'm a couple generations in, then I'll, I'll do some reversals. It just makes it so it's harder for people like to duplicate your work. Like anyone could take like strain A and reverse it to strain B. And everyone that does that is going to have seeds that are genetically identical to, to each other. Like, you know, you could take the, uh, a gelato 41 and reverse it to a OG. Say like a SF, real SF VOG cut. And, you know, you could find a banger out of there. And then, but people could, you know, reverse your work. Like anyone could just take the same 41 and cross it to the same, reverse it to the same receiver, like the OG. And like their seeds will be genetically identical to your seeds. Mm -hmm. So like using males and females makes it so like, it's kind of more of your own. Yeah. Harder to do, like impossible to duplicate. Yeah. Damn. And do you do most of your work? Like, so you, so you, so two runs of male and female, then femme. Okay. This is no, these are big lessons for a lot of people out well, there right now. It's RS11 reversal, bro. There's like multiple generations. Like the, the F, the OZ Kush got f 2 and then it got, you know, dusted to the Sherb. So it's multiple generations before, you know, a RS-11 reversal. Huge shout out Skittles crew. This oh, is bro, Skittles too, bro. Birth like, so many strains. The, like that's like the baseline of most of my work is Skittles. Think yeah. about it. Wow. OZ Kush Get seeds up. were the best seeds I've ever bought in my life. Hands down. The OZK. The, oh, the first OZK from that Emerald Cup were the best seeds that I ever bought like my entire life. I just bought the Z3 this this time, bro. They're they're killing it. That crew, they continually put out phenomenal terpy strains that like, I mean, you can birth other strains off of other brands. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, bro, like that's like probably the most popular terp, like is that Skittles terp. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I'm growing right now. It's not honest. an easy one to work with, bro. But like when you do, you know, strike gold, bro, you really hit. Have you directly bred with her yet? Like, have you done any receiver or anything directly with that yet? Uh, I did. There, I didn't. I have them in the fridge though. It's because, like, I don't Ooh. like directly, like you know, stepping on other people's toes. Like, I know fields and like 
like you know like if anything bro like if i cross something with the z i would hit him up like yo like let's collab on it but you're big i mean I don't but like you're not even selling them yeah no i got them in the fridge yeah. but like i don't like to like work with other people's stuff that they built on their own like i try to build my own shit from the ground up like i don't want to try to like you know you put your work into that name like i don't want to take your name and try to you know monetize your name that you built up so like i try to stay away from like you know other comp other brands you know like flagship products yeah it's just like a moral like an ethical thing to me lessons this is a og <laughs> episode bro for real you got a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh you lay it down very easy like that but it's it's stuff that a lot like most people will be like yeah but i'm not selling the seed so why you know but i get it because that that zope and rs 11 times skittles would be madness yeah it's just i rather you know break bread with the people that you know actually created that skittles wave then you know just take it and try to monetize it on my own like Cause you know, that's someone else's work. So like, it's just, I don't want to like, you know, dig into someone else's pockets or eat off someone else's plate. Like Pat God says, collaboration over competition. Yeah. yeah. Like, but there's money to go around if you do shit the right way. It's just a lot of people just are in it for themselves. Like they don't like giving credit. They just want the whole bag for themselves. How do you and find like, the right team to work with? Shit. Right. Isn't that, that's yeah. what you're talking about right now. Pretty much. Especially rec, bro. There's like a lot of, you know, outsiders that aren't from this industry really running shit. So like it's you gotta be wary, you know, who you partner up with. Cause they might have not have the same, you know, ethics as you do. That's in business in general, bro. Yeah. <laughs> straight up. I'm here to tell you. Yeah. You, you regular, really gotta like, you really business. gotta move, uh, take your time. Yeah, like a lot like of these people that are throwing up these forty million dollar facilities, bro, they come from you know, residential yeah. backgrounds. Like the people doing the biggest build outs right now are coming from like I'm um, coming from not residential, bro, coming from real estate backgrounds. Right. Develop developers, yeah. bro, are yeah. very heavy in these backed by huge like hedge products. funds and investment groups and stuff. Exactly, and which is bro. you you now then have to answer for all that money. Yeah. And so these people are disconnected. So there's a disconnect. Yeah. And those I mean, bro, are the like biggest a lot of situations. Them, yeah, like their only interest is, you know, like throwing up these massive facilities, but they don't really know what it takes to, you know, operate them. Like they'll throw up a $40 million facility and try to give someone like $100,000 a year to run the whole facility. It's like, well, you get what you pay for. Like someone who's really on their own and is capable of running that scale is not going to take a hundred thousand bucks. Hell no. And that's why so many of these big spots fail, bro, is because, bro, they try to like underpay the operators and they like, you know, a lot of people talk a big game, but they've never ran something of that scale before. So it's just like, and it's just like for a hundred, like this small of a salary, it's just like a lot of the, re like those big corporate dudes, like in their head, it's like, oh, like it's all the same work. So I'm just going to find the cheapest person to do this job. Like that's their mindset. But like I said, you get what you pay for. And like, that's a big mistake, bro. Like if you have thousands of lights and someone fumbles a couple runs, like. You know, that could see it all bankrupt red. you. I love yeah, that. Seen all red. These these guys need to listen to what you just said, man. You're, you're talking. Yeah. I mean, that was deep right there, bro. There's so many operators right now in California not paying their people. Don't got the right people in place because they don't want to pay that position. So they hired some random or four four guys at twenty an hour, right? Yeah. But instead of putting a head grower in there or someone with a brand or someone with their own genetics, and instead of having a mom rumor and say, like they're cutting every corner, they'd rather just buy clones every run and then it's not even hey let's buy some good clones it's let's buy the cheapest clones we can get and then it's let's grow it the cheapest we can grow it and then it's let's use the cheapest nutrients and the cheapest ip let's not even do an ipm and so now they're paying 20 dollars an hour workers like there's so many levels to what you just said and people are like why doesn't this weed look like it used to and that's all the consumer sees is like, why does the rec weed not look like it should or what like it did when they were able to go straight to a brand and sit at the table and buy it from them? Yeah. And it's it's what you're just talking about right there. It starts right there. Put the people who know how to run that operation in and pay them. 
Give them part of the company. Do what you have to do to have success. Because oh, if not, you're dudes, not. They do not want to give equity up. And like, that's, no. that's what I mean. It's like, they're just looking at, like, this is a very niche business, bro. Like a very niche industry. And like, you can't treat it just like real estate. Like it's a very, like it's a niche. And these people really don't know. Like they're just looking at, at shit on a spreadsheet. So they don't, and they don't come from this. So they don't understand all the intricacies like that at all. I mean, that's why there's, the streets are flooded right now with like thousand dollar fucking lemon cherry gel and gelato packs and like flooded with thousand dollar, you know, mid packs. It's because of that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's these mega facilities that are just pumping out mids and like. They got to sell it. And you got to it gotta get rid of it somehow. Like they got over a million dollars overhead a month. And they're upset at the black market. Fucking black market. If it wasn't for them, man. All right. But see what I'm saying though? You, they that's are, they what are the, the funny market. thing yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, but that's the funny mentality is that people want to say, well, damn, maybe we should, you know, these are the 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 operator, the guys high. Maybe we should come down on the black market because that's what's fucking up the white market. No, the white market's what's fucking up the white market. The guys who actually own the companies, just like you're yeah, saying. Yeah, brother, white yeah, it starts there. Yeah, because they're the, the ones mega producers. No one's producing at scale compared to like some of these corporate companies, bro. Like, no one has not that. even close, bro. No one has that kind of money. Not just that, bro. Like they get not, busted too. Yeah, bro. Like, come on. <laughs> How many like black market four thousand lighters are there? Like, honestly, <laughs> one, maybe <laughs> two in the yeah. whole. And that, and now you're talking these days, probably zero. Maybe five years ago there were one or two. You know, yeah. you used to hear about someone getting popped for some massive grow. You never four or five thousand. But, yeah. but, but, yeah, you're right. And then that's what's flooding the market with all this cheap boof because they can't sell it. Because you look at this eighth and you're like, damn, this is six month old. Think about what's on the shelf that they didn't put in that jar. Yeah, bro. And that's why, like the. Bro, their inventory piles up, and that's why they let it go for so cheap. Like, especially Fuck the bro, whole like, market. Yeah, up. bro. Like, there might be a thousand dollar pack, fresh pack coming out, and they still got like eight hundred dollar packs of the last run shit that's a little older. So it's just like, bro, it just drives the numbers down. And they don't know how to pivot because they got some guy sitting in a chair with his feet up and doesn't know the thing. So he's like, bro, "What do I do? I guess we just should grow some more." Bro, should we just grow some more? Let's expand. We're not making enough. We let's should grow some more. Back. Yeah, let's make another spot. Fucking like, scale back. I'm telling people pivot. To, like I hate to say it, but hash rosin for a while because you you're hearing literally you're getting uh, operators come and saying we got like 70 packs sitting and now we got the next room coming down this week and then a week after and it's like now it's 150 packs sitting in a room just sitting. Yeah, and say like these are 200 light rooms that you're talking about get like 400 pounds. Like you need to clear that because this is a this is pro like a perishable Produce, good, yeah. bro. Yeah, it's, it's it needs to go. It can't sit. I hate to I say it ruin hash rosin, but I think that's why I tell them that jar in a year from now is going to look the same. It might even be better in a year from now. That hash rosin. Well, that's that flower is horrendous. Yeah, that has unsellable a long in a year. Shelf life, bro. Flower does not. Yep. Yeah. At least at that point, if you ever sell the business, you can like, let's say everything fails, but you have 150 jars of hash rosin or something saved up. At least you have something that room of flour sitting in an air condition. That's done. That shit's unsellable. Mm -hmm. it, like at least turn it into money yeah. now while it's still good. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to like, literally, bro, that was the whole reason is seeing this happen. And I was running a facility and I'm seeing the inside, just like what you're talking about. It's madness, bro. What you're saying, yeah, but they're ruining the market. Yeah, like a lot of these guys don't look at it like that though, bro. Cause in reality, like concentrates move slower than packs. So they're not even thinking there. Like, bro, they have multi million dollar overheads and they need to liquidate their crop ASAP, you know, cause another one's coming down in a couple of days. And these are 200 light plus light rooms, big rooms. And like just, just the, like the manpower that goes into creating that much rosin. Like they're not going to be interested in that. It's too much, and it's and it moves slower. So how does it change? How does the state open it up for legacy guys like you to be able to, and all these other guys to be able to expand in other ways, right? Besides bro, like, just, I hate to say it, but the the way that the laws were written kind of seems like it almost intentionally paved the way for these corporate guys to just take over the industry, and it just the barriers to entry are purposely high for you know people that have been doing this their whole life. So it was kind of like, bro, the laws were damn near written for like these big corporate dudes. Agreed. So I think probably they have to rewrite the laws if they want to do what you're saying.
Yeah. I mean, and Cali's one of the lowest. You look at some of these states like Florida. And even Nevada. Yeah. Million millions of dollars, and you gotta be somebody and know somebody or have like five million dollars verifiable yeah. fucking money sitting in the bank, like liquid. Yeah, liquid, like just sit they want to know which is there just in case so they can take it. If yeah, God who forbid has that kind of money sitting in the bank, real estate guys. Mm-hmm. And Developers. guys that will not want to pay their operators. They don't want to pay that head grower, bro. Mm-hmm. They already put up money for the facility. We just want you to just grow some weed, it, bro. It's really like large investment groups, venture capitalists. They, you know, you have an, a budget and amount of money. You got to appropriate the money. Yeah. So cannabis being a hot industry while it had its run, you know, and has had its run, um, especially over the pandemic. And then on the, on the other end, we saw the same thing. You see the same thing, right? In the traditional market, because people threw up a ton of greenhouses, a ton of debt. Like it was, it was in every corner of the market where you just saw mass production. And I think it's just the effect of the pandemic, man. Like what everyone saw happen there. Um, yeah, we're like, and then, and then you had a whole year where you knew no one's really messing with you while you're building and stuff. Yeah, I mean, so like, you know, people, it, after the pandemic, like growers came out of retirement and came back. You know, the tickets were so high, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, people started building like crazy. And now we're not even a year, two years later, year and a half. And we're seeing it's just like it happened like in a matter of like 60 days, I feel like bro, 60 to 90 it's days. It's crazy. Just like tanked, market tank. I mean, crazy. bro, it's just supply and demand, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like their bubbles only last for so long before they pop. Yeah. And like, is it more like the market tanked or is it a market correction? Because it's supply and demand, bro. Like, like I said, bro, there's, bro, these facilities going up are huge. And you hear about these new th- one, two, three, four thousand lighters popping up every week. Like, they're still like, like, bro, it's it insane, stopped. bro. So it's like, it's going to get to a saturation point. Like, bro, where do all these packs produced go? Like, they rot. Like, bro, there's more packs being pro- like produced than there is retail. Yeah big time they're gonna hit the market and they're gonna rot and there's gonna be cheap shitty weed and it's gonna be like Worth swimming nothing. through a sea of shit to find who are the guys actually still growing good fire that actually oh it's smoke. those same guys that we always knew you know it's the same tried and true brands that grow the fu- but now there's just a lot thicker of all the bullshit you got to turn down seven or eight different dispensaries to get to one that actually has some good shit or you got to go you know if it's your dealer you know let's say you live in a different state you got to go through three different dealers to find the one that actually gets still the homegrown shit or the fire you know that was from a good brand like because people are you know every trick in the game with like putting fake shit in different bags i mean you guys probably deal with that the I, I'll, more than anybody at, that and runs you and runs you know with like someone just putting stuff in zope bags and people are probably hitting you up like is this zope and it's like oh bro i get those every day can you verify this like <laughs> it's like nah bro i can't <laughs> just right like up. bro nah, no I, can't. I got like can. i got like 20 oh. scam pages bro that they're active as fuck like we didn't even get into that get into nah, that yeah wizard trees too oh, holy hell wizard trees dojo bro we all got so many scam pages i got a scam telegram like and they'll basically just pretend to be me and then like Use offer all you videos. like zope packs at like a crazy cheap ticket and then tell them like, oh, and they tell you, oh, send me crypto. And then you'll send them crypto and then they block you. So it's just straight scam people. Or like a lot of people too, like claim to like sell like RS11 or zope cuts and like will charge like five, ten thousand dollars a cut and like you won't really get shit. Like, it'll just be just a nursery using the name just to try to sell clones for more. Like, that's the biggest problem is, like, nurseries and, like, these seed makers, because they're not even breeders, bro. Like, they're seed makers, you know, using popular names just to to sell their inventory. That's fucked up. Yep. That's like, basically bro, like counterfeiting. Could, that happens a yeah, lot between UK. It's counterfeiting. If, like, I tell you that, yo, this is a Zope clone and you give me $10,000 for it and it's not a Zope clone, like, I scammed you. And now that guy it. breeds with it and puts those seeds out yeah. and says like, yo, I'm running Zope and, and he, and he and now really most people buy those and seeds. And he really might think he has the real cut. Mm-hmm. Like I've heard that so many times, like, bro, trust me, this is the real cut. Like I paid five, ten thousand dollars for it. And I'm like, bro, that doesn't mean it's, it's real. <laughs> no. And, and this is what's Straight crazy. Up. Breeders left and right running strains that they're like, oh, I'm running the, uh, this is the Girl Scout cookie, the forum or the platinum. And you're like, that's not the platinum. 
and they've already bred and put out runs with it. And you're oh, like, bro, like, now these, people are popping those. These seed makers, bro, like they, they just get cuts, name stuff. They don't even flower them out to verify them. Like they just pollinate them. So it's like a lot of, that's why I lost interest in seeds, bro. Cause now, nowadays you don't even know what you're getting. You got to go to legit people. You got to go to the people where you're, you're looking at people popping their gear and being like, damn, look at that. That like, you could see the mom and the dad, you could see what's coming out of it. Like, that's why in the beginning of this, before the cameras cut on, I was like, bro, when can we get some of the, like, when, when are you going to release some of these seeds, bro? Seeds, bro. Like, because you your stuff, that. the stuff you're working with too, are some of the most sought after genetics, not just saying RS11 that's and why. soap. I mean, the Y life, the, the guava, the, like you go on and on. These have, are like, killers. I got access to those cuts too. Cause people like know my reputation and know how I am. They know I'm not going to like, water it down or whore it out like so the reason i have access to all this is because of how i conduct myself in the first place i love that yeah people need to hear that i love that it's like integrity bro like it only takes you one time to fuck up your reputation you can do one faulty move to undermine like 10 year long reputation so like i don't even want to tread in those waters <laughs> that's why the dp name's good yeah. uh, <laughs> for real <laughs> Shit, yeah. anything you want to close out with, homie? Shit, bro, just thanks for having me in. Like, bro, that RS11 drop, bro, thanks for everyone coming out, bro, from around the world, bro. I met people from global. Like, it was crazy. Like, I honestly didn't think it had that much of an impact till I actually seen people send me itineraries from fucking Belgium. Like, they're catching flights, you know, across the world just to come to this event. And, like, that's when it really hit me. Like, damn, this is bigger than I ever thought it would be. Yeah, it's big, bro. Shout out Wizard Tree, shout out Doja, shout out Seed Junkie for you know helping us get the venue and putting it all together like that. Like, yeah, bro, it was a team effort for sure. Urban Arbor for hosting that shit. Yeah, shout out Urban Sick. Arbor too, bro. That's a dope ass you know location. Yeah, yeah. man. I know everyone's can't wait to, if you ever do a drop of seeds, everyone will be ready, bro. But we love what you do, man. We're big fans of it. Yeah. This dude oh, yeah. put me on the Zope. I've been a big fan of Wizard Trees and, and what you guys all do together. Yeah. It, I mean, it I'm is. Like, it's I'm one of my favorite collabs of all time. Heavy. Yeah. Like the ones I'm focused on really heavy right now, I got a Pure Kush Wildlife BX1 male. That's, I have a couple strains that are my gas lines. It's the PK Wildlife BX1 male. I got a Pink Guava uh, Kosher Kush male i just recently sourced the original purple urkel after looking for like two years i got the original master i got a new uh oh. like an old strain that's kind of been like an urban legend like cherry pie kush like i finally got that one so i'm about to start you know mixing some you know older you know staples with you know some newer with the new and we can, we'll be able to see what you got dropping through your line that you got coming. Yeah. So right now, like Instagram's like, I get deleted so much. I cannot post anything hardly. So like I'm in, I'm developing my own app. So like I could post whatever I want. Like, you know, I could document my pollinations, pheno hunts, just be like a thousand percent transparent with my work. So people could see that actually the work that goes into creating this. Cause like, bro, to create a strain is really like a year long process. Like if you really do it the right way. So a lot goes into it. So I just want to show people like when you do it the right way, this is what it takes. Like this is the, the real process. Like if someone's producing like fucking 10 different strains coming out with 10 strains every month, it's impossible, bro. Like that's not legitimate. It's, it's unless you have just mega facilities and just like, it's just, people aren't doing that. It's called fuckery. <laughs> Remix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rerock. I know, but that's why people love you. That's why we love you, bro. And that's why we fuck with Deep East Oakland and the Deep East crew from day one. Yeah. As soon as we saw it and we watch what you guys do and how you conduct yourself and your principles you live by, you you got to have heart. We love that shit, bro. We you know, love that in shit. In Oakland, bro, we call that re-rocking. Like, if you take a you know, a strain and make up a bag of like a design for it and like change the name. Like we just call it re-rocking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is. What it is. 
don't re-rock rubber shit yeah (laughs) (laughs) that shit's funny as fuck when i heard that yeah bro oh it's like 2022 bro it's the era of the re-rock right now for sure well teamwork makes a dream work bro and you guys are representative of that you know it's awesome to see because it's when money comes in people act funny and it's dope to see you guys rocking together still so that's why you got to keep your circle close because like that money really changes people like for real like it does like people you grew up with can switch up over some money easy so imagine how a stranger is going to switch up over money i mean over a thousand dollar cut a hundred and uh, you know 1400 like, cuts just dropped and that sold out i saw people camp i saw brands that have millions of dollars behind them with investors camped out to get that cut yeah bro like, like people like bro people will kill their own friends over a couple thousand dollars like my buddy got killed my yeah over cuts yeah exactly those Damn. true words. That's why that mask is up. And that's why we fuck with D Beast heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I be on defense 24-7. Where, <laughs> where can they find you right now? Website? Oh, I'm you working said, on a website Instagram right now. Down? I'm like, I've been putting most of my efforts into the app. Cause I cr- we created me and my boy. Uh we're creating an augmented reality app. Like, do you remember like I used to have bags that animated when you took videos of it, but I had to use a third party app. So we're basically making, developing a better version of that augmented reality app. And we're implementing like machine learning because that first app's really choppy. Like if you tilt the camera a little bit, it'll glitch. So the app we're making is an augmented reality app. So like you could take a video of say your brand logo and like every time, you know, it pops up on camera, that app, the algorithm will recognize it and that it'll signal the animation to kick on. Damn, and we're using machine cool. learning in our app. We got a patent on that. So every time, you know, you like the algorithm sees an image, it gets more familiar with the image. So like if you turn it, like it won't glitch out. It'll be way more consistent. That's dope. Hell yeah. Yeah. So it's going to like the website's going to drop the same time as the app because, you know, the app is when I, what I'm putting most of my energy into right now. And we're going to document the process and hopefully be able to watch you guys do your the new reversals and the yeah, breeding yeah. of the zope and all that stuff. Like, everyone been asking me for merch like for the last year, like clothes. And it's like, that's coming soon, but it's going to, if you download the app, you're going to get the first shot at it. And like to get on, to be able to purchase the clothes, like they're always going to be small release drops. So you got to have like a, a entrance, like you got to have a code just to be able to purchase the clothes. So you got to have kind of some type of tie to even be able to purchase the clothes. I like that. Keeping Super it close. Yeah. This is weird. Like our plan is just, you know, a once a month drop, you know, limited drops. Damn. Yeah. Bro, fuck oh, yeah. with Deep East. And where can we get that though? What's the web? You have a website or nah, where can we not, go? Not drop yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a uh, Deep East app is the website and the webs, the app's going to be Deep East. Perfect. We're just waiting for Apple to verify some of the the app and then it'll go probably be like live within like a month or something like that. Shit. Shit, that's, that's fire. That's awesome. Yeah. Soon. So you know, I'm up in the Bay, bro. We got a lot of tech people. Like, like I'm friends with some like big tech guys. So like we kind of combine forces just the same way. Like I've, you know, fucked with Wizard Trees and Doja. It's like I'm fucking with the tech dude. Like create some new shit that the world hasn't seen yet. That's super dope, man. For real. Game changing. Taking advantage of where you're at, too. Yeah. Well, shit, man. Wrapping up. You already know it's DEO Farms, DP, straight out of Oakland, man. First smoke of the day. Yeah. Peace. My first interview, basically. <laughs> yeah, you know. What do you know about yeah, that? Man, for real, yeah. for real. What's up? I want to take a second to talk about Grow Generation, the largest hydroponic retailer in the country. Over 60 stores nationwide. Go to growgeneration.com and enter in the code first smoke. Become a part of the family. Let's go where the pros go to grow. Hey, calling all breeders and growers to the world's largest online seed bank, neptuneseedbank.com. Check out this. I got goodies from all the best breeders in the market. To go here and change your game in your garden, go to NeptuneSeedBank.com. You can get Blackleaf and you can get all the best breeders in the game. NeptuneSeedBank.com, first smoke of the day sent you. Let's talk about Athena, one of the number one nutrient companies in the world, Athena Nutrients. Blackleaf, tell them how you use IPM in your garden. 
Athena IPM, one of the best products out right now for IPM management. This product passed testing for legal facilities and is what is what I use in my garden. Blackleaf approved Athena IPM. This product and all other products, athenaag.com. Go check them out. Appreciate you guys. Yo, welcome to the Diamond Mine, the diamondmine.la, California source for boutique genetics, powered by yours truly, Blackleaf. And you know what that means? That means I'm bringing my best genetics into this. I'm bringing stuff I've been hiding, harboring away, stuff I haven't wanted to let out. We're bringing all that into the diamondmine.la and we're gonna offer that to California. Go on our website, hit the newsletter, and see if you can rock with us. Get on board with some of our genetics and change your garden. The diamondmine.la, powered by Blackleaf. We're here holding Power SI, and we want to talk a little bit about what this can do for your garden. It's a game-changing product I use in my garden. Foliar, res feeds, I recommend it to all growers. This is a game-changer. Go to Power SI and enter in the code First Smoke to get a discount. Yo, we're right here at TLC Collective, home of the Jungle Boys, where they've been playing with fire since 2006, right here in Los Angeles, California. It's at Jungle Boys on all social media, jungleboys.com, and if you wanna see for yourself, come right here to TLC Collective, man. Let's check it out.